Hello there, it's Ruth Sherman, CEO and Celebrity Speech and Media Coach, and I want to talk to you about election night speeches. In this awful, embarrassing presidential campaign, much that we've all taken for granted over so many years has been turned on its head. I feel so badly for people for whom this is their first election. You know, while I've always said the best communicator wins, there's been so much crap generated from so many different directions, I honestly changed my mind about who's doing a better job from one day to the next, and sometimes multiple times during the course of a single day. I veer from shaken to sure and back and forth again. So instead of identifying who's likely to win based on who I think is the better communicator, I've decided to move on to the election night speeches the candidates will deliver when the results are in and the power they each have to move us forward from our current depressing circumstance. These election night speeches are critically important, both in substance and style. With this terrible campaign as a backdrop, they're going to be more important than ever before for the country, for sure, but also for the world. So here's what both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump must do in their election night speeches, whether they win or lose. And by observing them, we can learn a lot about leadership, particularly the roles grace and dignity play. I know, missing in action, right? So the mark of a true leader is someone who can give voice to the people he or she leads. There is no one else. They need you for this. When a candidate wins a U.S. presidential election, it's possible less than a majority will have voted for that candidate. And of those voters, many will vote not because they like a candidate, because, but because they dislike the other candidate more, therefore further limiting who can be counted as a solid supporter. But when a winner is decided, especially in a non-incumbent year like this one, the ground immediately shifts beneath all of us. For many in the imposing camp, it feels more like an earthquake, measuring like seven on the Richter scale. So it may seem as if the winner has a bigger lift than the loser, but I think they both have an equal as well as awesome responsibility. They must both exhibit signs of dignity and grace. I know I said it already, I'm saying it again, the language of inclusiveness, of love even, should be front and center, and not just for one's own supporters, but for all the people, all the people who took the time to be involved and to vote. The winner in particular must primarily show heartfelt compassion for the supporters of the loser, if not necessarily for the loser him or herself. It would be nice, but unlikely given the personal animus between the candidates this time. The loser has to communicate faith in the system and respect for the people's decision. This is to ensure the peaceful transfer of power, a uniquely beautiful part of the American system. Additionally, the winner should do the following things. One, keep it short. I'd advise no longer than 15 minutes. Obama spoke longer than that, but our attention spans have shortened since then. Besides, in terms of eloquence and public speaking technique, He's a hard act to follow, and neither Clinton nor Trump has his chops. Number two, thank every American who participated, whomever they voted for, followed by those who are closest, and then the team that, that worked for you. Acknowledge the other side that it was a hard-fought campaign. Show grace in winning by promising to listen to and work with the loyal opposition. They're loyal. They're not your enemies. Speak truthfully about conflicts and disagreements, but tie it into our freedoms as Americans. Convey hope, and this is super important, convey hope for the future and confidence about our ability to get there. Exhibit a little self-directed humor, amazing how that covers a multitude of sins. And speak from the heart. And now for the loser, keep it very short. Five minutes, really, that's enough. Convey the selection of a president is bigger than any one person or campaign. Acknowledge the loss and affirm it was fair and square. Thank supporters, family, and team in that order. 
show grace and dignity in losing by going quickly and quietly and don't come back. Don't return to public life for a good long time. The country needs to heal and adjust and it needs you to help us do that. With passions running so high, it's difficult to imagine how much can be accomplished with a solid, heartfelt, dignified and graceful speech, especially after such a horrid and frankly disgraceful campaign. But we'll all have a chance to see, hopefully Tuesday evening, that powerful speech can heal deep wounds. I'm certain of it. It's actually the only thing I'm certain of when it comes to this election. Go vote. That's number one. And number two is if you want to learn more about leadership communication and how to give a great speech and, and heal uh, things that are going on in your world through speech, hop on over to ruthsherman.com and subscribe so you can get a bunch of cool free stuff. I'll see you there.